Assalamu alaikum uh, and hi this is uh, the continuous of video for our module 5 uh, as we already look into our 5.1 is it now we're going to go on our 5.2 what we're going to cover is the overview, uh, the overview, the user visible register, the uh, control and status register. Register for the highest level of memory hierarchy. So this one is very important. A small set of high speed storage locations, of course, uh, temporary storage for data and control information this is the use the use of the register which is a at as a small set of high speed storage and also it is uh, also it adds a uh, temporary storage register whole data that can be readily accessed by the cpu they can be implemented using the flip flop. Ha, now we go back to your um, digital logic subject. Uh, the flip flop. A uh, 32 bit register require 32 D flip flop. See? Wow. You need 32 uh, flip flop. If you have 64, then you need, is it 36, uh, 64 D flip flop also? So this is the correlations and later on you can also you see that you need to look into your DL uh, even parity or parity uh, it is also in your COE subject okay register can be divided into two main category okay one you can see one you cannot see in uh, yeah uh, I guess cannot see directly is it visible or it is not visible right user visibility register it is used for a general purpose while for control and status register it is for special purpose what is the special purpose okay uh, let's take a look into the general purpose first maybe reference reference by assembly level instructions and are those visible to the user so maybe reference uh, reference by assembly level instructions and are those visibles because normally oh, okay later on you will see what is the example of visible register and under control instance register uh wow well, it is special purpose used to control the operations of the cpu and most are not visible to the user so you cannot see it for user visible register uh, there are four main category general purpose data address and lastly uh, sorry lastly your condition codes the register will be referred uh, referenced by means of the machine's language that processor executes uh, what is this what is the general purpose what is the data what is the address what is the condition codes now and the general purpose of register can be assigned to variety of functions defined to the operations within the instructions can be used for addressing functions example accumulator best count and also your data so uh, where's my In the middle, uh, it is something okay.
while for your data register whole data and cannot be used in the calculations of an operand address what is the example accumulator so accumulator you know which is a right e a x a x so this is the register and the accumulator so accumulator can be used in the general purpose of register uh, also uh, can be used in the type of data register um, for address register whole address information general purpose address register segment pointer stack pointer and index pointer this is the example under your address register and condition codes ah now you see the flags now you see the flag uh, because before this if you look into your flag uh, you need to answer equations in your lab too or certain question related to flag but in theory you not yet covers but now here you look into your flags what is this be set by the operation uh, the processor hardware as result of operations can be assessed by a program but not change directly example like your sign flag sf uh, zero flag sf overflow flag of there is a lot other flags bit values are used as the basis of conditions conditional jumps instructions wow take a look over here this is the example of your microprocessor register organizations as you can see on your processor you have your register you have your control unit uh, this one is register your control unit cu and also your alu now you see this one which is your register you have data register do uh, and etc you have address register a1 a2 h3 you have program status yeah which is program counter and status register uh, under your general register you can see you have uh, ax accumulator you have px uh, best uh, cx count and the x data i also provided you with your extra notes right uh, so uh, in your extra notes you already look into all of this uh, we already cover on our register you, uh, and you can see how many bits that occupy ax how many bit for EAX 32 uh, 16 and yeah you also have what AH which is 8 bit AL also 8 bit so please remember that so in your general register you have AX you can also have EAX the difference between each other although it is similar which is under I call military register but uh, different is only in how many bits that covers pointer and index uh, segment and program status so under pro, uh, pointer and index you can see you have stack ptr which is pointer best ptr source index destinations index uh, this is sp bp si di so you can also have ESP this one is six, uh, 32 bit for segment you can see you have codes CS data DS stack SS and extract ES and you can see you have a program status which is flag register instructions point uh, flag and also instruction point this one is 16 bit 32 bits so this is just the example in your microprocessor register organizations later on you're going to see okay before that this one is more to recap but uh, not 
recap uh, in your COE, but because you did not touch in the theory, but I did provide you with the extra notes, which is I asked you to read, because it's very important for you to know on the register, uh, because you need to use your, uh, which is your, you want to learn assembly language, so all of that mm, is equipped you to read and learn on register. Now we go deeper in the register as well. EAX automatically used by MUL and also the IV instructions. So automatically used by MUL and also the IV instructions. So if you have, I give you example. Okay, let's say. Um, this is adding process so it is not automatically you will use EAX because uh, EAX only automatically assigned by MUL and the IV so you need to note this keyword automatically so if you are not assigned with uh, register over here you already know that if you have multiplication operations you have some things uh, normally you're going to use your EAX or EAX as the register so this one is accumulator and this is the count for your CX and also EX ECX automatically used by processor as a loop counter. If you have a loop, could uh, you have something here? Sorry, and then you automatically will use the register under your ECX. Avoid use uh, usage for generic calculations. So all of this under your stack. Please avoid avoid use for generic calculations. So this one is not used for generic calculations. Address register should be wide enough to hold the longest address. The data register should be wide enough to hold most data type. You can see if register re address register is need to hold the uh, address for data register. It stores the data type. Will not want to use 64 bits register if the vast majority of the data operations use 16 and 32 bits operands related to which of memory data bus okay these keywords uh, not keywords these notes is very important uh, PS blah 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 so if you have this one please read it carefully same goes to this one this is like your PS solution concatenate registers together to store longer format you need to use this term of format DX AX. How are you going to apply it? Now it's come to your example. So let's say you have uh, MUL. As you see, MUL is automatically for your accumulator register. So let's say you have AX. And of course, uh, assume the following dumb register this is the RAM register for the, 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 the beginning 
uh, value. So update the related register once the instruction execute. Once the execute this one, what is happen to the initial register value that provided under your dumb register? So you have M U L A X. What is your AX? You need to multiply your AX value together. So this is your EAX, which is 32 bits. And of course, if you have 16 bits, which is AX, you just need to take this value. So your AX is 0400H. Hexadecimal. And this one now because you need to do multiplication there is no value or anything it means that you need to multiply with yourself so you're going to get uh, 100 100 hexadecimal one zero 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 h so this is your answer and go back to your ps uh, do you remember your ps if you have uh, a long okay do it first a long st storage longer format you need to do this one d x a x uh, so that's why your answer here this is your answer you need to do in terms of this format too. So this is 16 bits, this is another 16 bit, you need to put like this, isn't it? So your AX will be stored with this value um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and uh, your, 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 your DX will be 0, 0, 1, 0. Like this. So before this, you can see. Before this, the value of e a x is zero z uh a x is zero four zero zero. While you execute this m u l a x, you're going to store it uh with d x and a x. You're going to pick this as a x and d is s the x so you need to see the changes between these two value okay now you have another example but please make sure you still remember the value from this one because we're going to use the initial value from uh, this answer same goes to the any initial value so assume the following dumb register update the related register once the instruction execute so you have d i v b x c please remember another ps huh? another ps uh, key if you have m u l and d i v Although it is not mentions the e a uh, e a x, you need to use it automatically, isn't it? So that's why this going to be happen. Okay. Uh, okay, this is your. You have m u l a x. <laughs> the I V button. Okay. You have the IV BX. BX. So your BX, you need to find the value, uh, the initial value for BX first. Okay. This is your value of your BX. As I already mentioned, this is 32 bits. And if you need to tag BX only, you need to have 
16 bits this one is 16 bits total of 32 bits okay so you will write down the value of bx first uh, 0, 0, 2, 0, h and you're going to see that if you have div what we're going to do is you're going to um, divide it with your ax because what your ax is going to be used automatically with your auto, uh, accumulator register previously you have dx ax this is your answer previously and your bx is 0, 0, 2, 0, h now what you're going to do is this longer value from previous which is mul ax you need to divide it with the bx so this value you divide with 0, 0, 2, 0 you're going to get at thousands 8000 zero, 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 hexadecimal and because you are using div and mul automatically you're going to store it into your accumulator register so your answer will be putting to your ax not bx normally this is going to be your destination right but using div and also mul this will be automatically putting into your ax now because of this also you need to remember the format you have dx So your answer will be like this. Please try to do it. Uh, it is very simple. This is that that is the basic things. So now it's under your control and status register. The uh, variety of processes registers that are employed to control the operations of the processor. Most of these on most machines are not visible to the user. Some of them may be visible, so means that some visible, some not. To mission instruction as a kit in uh, controls or operation uh, operating system mode. Different machines will have different register organizations and use different terminology. Okay, you have four essential register for instruction education. Uh, what's that for? Register PC, program counter. Register IR, instruction register. Register MAR which is memory address register and MBR memory buffer register what is the functions for PC the address of instruction to be fetched uh, IR is the instructions most recently fetched MAR means the address of the locations in the memory in memory and lastly memory buffer mbr a words of data to be written to memory or the words most recently read the four register just mentions are used for movements of data between processor and memory so not all processor have internal register design as MER and also your MBR need some equivalence buffer mechanism to store the bits transfer bits read bits to 
and also from the data bus. The ALU may be direct access to MBR and user visible register. There are many additional buffering register at the boundary to the ALU serve as the input and output register for the ALU and exchange data with MBR and user visibility register. Okay, this one is your computer component. The CPU exchange data with the memory. You already look into your CPU, but inside it you can see now it is not term of your register control units and ALU, but in ALU over here you have the education units, you have uh, IR, PC, MAR, MBR, input output AR, input output BR. So all of this is under your CPU and what is connection between it is your using your system bus. You are connected to the main memory and also input output model, module. So in your uh, input output module, you have buffers inside. While for main memory, you have instruction, instruction, instructions. Sometimes you also have data, data, data. So what is PC, what is IR is already mentioned previously in previous um, slide. Okay, now. Under your instruction point, the extended instruction point or EIP register holds the address of the next instructions to be executed. The EIP register corresponds to the program counter, your PC register in other architectures. EIP can be manipulated for certain instructions like call, jump, uh, returns to branch to a new locations. So this is instruction point. So normally you're going to use if let's say you have the codes of calls and then you can also have a jump. Uh, let's say return to specific call to Malaysia. Okay, this is another uh, loop. So you're going to go to Malaysia. Jump to Indonesia. So you're going to go through anything program instructions under your in Indonesia and return also maybe you need to specify go to uh, specify returns points. And the uh, next is your program status. Many process uh, design includes a register or a set of register often known as a program status words. O P S W. They contain the stat status information and conditions code. The ALU has number of status flag, flag that reflect the outcome of arithmetic and also bitwise operations. Of course, <sighs> I had reading and also I had theory. Uh, let on you see what is basically that. Uh, particular points as also you already look into these flags in your terminal output in your visual studio and your lab too of course so status flag that reflect the the outcome of aromatic contents of the destination operand so they are specific value if let's say you want to have uh, zero flag to be one you need to know the conditions how it's going to get uh it is one or maybe you want it to permanently zero so you need to know so set when destinations equal to zero so when set is means by one zf will get 
value of 1 when your destination equal to 0. And then for your sine flag, your SF, you're going to get your FF value equal to 1 when destination is negative. So whenever you have the you have the terminals of your output. Of course, you have the EAX, you have blah, 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 register. Then, uh, you can see on both terms, it's you have the um, flag. Let's say CF, so there is a value, whether it is 0 or maybe it is 1. Uh, this one is maybe we put it as AF so you will know that it is a auxiliary flag so what is the value and what is trigger it to be 1 or what is going to trigger it to be 0 so here you learn it so for sign flag if your destination is negative then SF become as 1 Carry flag or CF set when unsigned value is out of range. If you have reached the out of range, your CF equal to 1. Normally, when you have, well, let's say I have 0, 1. Why I put, um, panjang, panjang, sini. let's say you have additions. You have 10, 10. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And you have another 1 as the carry. So, if you have a carry over here, which is you already out of your range, because this is your normal range, which is 4 bits, when you have another extra, you will mention this as the out of range. So, you over... Mm, sorry. Uh, this one is unsigned, okay. Unsigned value is out of range means that your CF is equal to 1. So if it's an equation going to give you OF equal to 1, you need to know what is the function of OF which is overflow flag when you have sign value uh, related to negative, of course, is out of range. And next is uh, auxiliary flag AF set which is the value of 1 when there is a carry from lower nipples to higher nipples in a lower byte. So lower nipples to the higher nipples in the lower byte going to make it as a AF. And lastly, your parity flag PF set when a odd or even numbers of ones in the lower byte. What is the lower byte? Let only we'll see at samples. Now you have this flag. You have several flag that you already learned in your previous slide. Assume the system use even parity. Huh? What is even parity? So this is the value. You need to add this value. And of course, adding, you need to change it into the binary form. form. So this is binary for 0, 6, H. And this is the binary in terms of 54 hexadecimals. And the answer is... 5 e h and you can see okay you can see over here carry flag is 1 when unsigned value is out of range unsigned means whether it is positive or negative it's going to be out of range but 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 you can see over here it is not out of French, there is no um, carry flag, and uh, there is no carry value, and it is nicely in terms of similar bit range. So that's why your value 
for your CF and your OF, is it? It's zero. And why your PF? What is PF? One is happening. Okay, PF over your parity flag when they are odd or even numbers of ones in your lower byte. Okay, where is your lower byte? This is your lower byte. Means that you have a value of 1. There is another example. So if let's say you use the odd parity, you can see over here, huh, I have the overflow. I have the overflow over here. Uh, should be my carry will be 1. Uh, carry or OF. Carry, of course, it is unsigned. And what did it Okay. And also... Uh, your PF, see, your CF is equal to 1 because it is unsigned in, you will put this as 1. And then after that, you have numbers of 1, whether it is even or odd, your PF is 1. And lastly, there is a carry from lower nibble. Two higher nibbles. See? Okay. I tambah ya. Uh, 1 plus 0 equal to 1. 1 plus 1 equal to 0, 1. 1, 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. See? From lower to high byte. So, this is one byte. This is another one byte. So, this is lower byte. This is high byte. So you need to see over here. Set, which is mean by 1, when carry from lower nibble. Uh, you cari masuk nibbles ni. Di, there is in your first module and also in your um, digital subjects. Two higher nibbles in a lower byte. High nibbles in a lower byte. Eh, eh. Salah error. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Teka belakang pula. Okay. That's why you can see over here you have EF as 1 and you are the lagi CF and you are the also PF and the rest will be remain zero. Eh. So this is the answer. The answer. So let's say over here example number three. You have also under a flag example. Assume this system use even parity for a uh, words size number. Huh? Words. Words to how many? Whether the system bits. Or the two bits, a double wood size number. Oh, double wood pull up. It is 64. It is 32 for words. Okay, you add these two. What will going to happen? This is binary. This is binary for 7098. And this one is 5033. When you add it together, you will get this value. Of course, in your lower, you have a value of 1. Automatically, your PF become as 1. So you need to see lower. You need to see also um, another, whether it is a bring or not the carry but I don't think it, ha it have carry from lower to high <coughs> you can see also you 
the sign flag SF is negative. Is it it is a negative number? One example ini. Okay, oh, example three. So you can see over here, uh oh, although it is a positive number, but you can see over here. That's why it's become one. Your OF over here said. Overflow flag means that sign value is out of range. Isn't it? So you need to check back on the words size. Of course, if if it is words, it's already long enough. But how about? Uh, I guess please try to convert it first into hexadecimal what you get whether it is uh, out of range or not and for B it is double wood of course it's not going to out of range because it's still 4 bits right um, so what you're going to see you have only this one whether it's odd or even it doesn't matter as long as you have 1111 at the lowest bit by okay you have dumb register if use word size number and you have also dumb register if use the word size number so this is the example from the example. Please try to do this example. Mm, you can also screenshot the answer. The answer. Try to figure out all the flag. Uh, is it? Uh, value ones or zero and okay uh, we need to end uh, our sub, sub topic part on two okay under design issues of your control and status register organizations operation system support operation system is window linux um, what else okay Certain type of control informations are of a specific utility to the operating system. The register operate uh, organization need to some extent to be tailored to a particular operating system. While second, the allocations of control informations between register and memory which is the register uh, the designer must decide how much control information should be in register and how much in your memory and lastly the usual trade-off of cost versus speed rise so this is the last uh, slide for your 5.2 so thank you for your for your watching and your attentions throughout this video i hope that you have fully understand uh, on what i teach in this video and later on i'm going to uh, create also another video for 5.3 what we're going to look is of course the overview the overview and the indirect cycle lastly the data flow okay, until then uh, please stay safe and salam shawal